month. It is a time to celebrate LGBTQ plus community. Part of this journey is deciding, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> Now, part of this journey is deciding when to come out to the world, and this is a, you know, a tough thing to do. So we asked some people to share their stories with us. They are powerful, they are inspiring. Take a look. I came out when I was 25 years old. Uh, I just woke up one day and I realized I was gay. It really was that way. I grew up in a very abusive household. There were a lot of you know, family traumas that we had faced, and I think throughout that entire time, up until I was 25, I really didn't ask myself who I was. I didn't have that space to negotiate that. With mom, you know, she was very open to it. She told me that I was her son, she was gonna love me regardless, but she was fearful for my safety. She knew that there were hate crimes. And the conversation with my father was very different. Um, he, was, he wasn't very accepting of it. I, I still don't talk to my uh, father about it. I, stalk, I talk to him, we have a relationship, he hasn't disowned me, and I thought that was the most beautiful thing out of it, that we found a way to just communicate, be comfortable with one another. I was pretty sure still at that point I was never going to let my family know. I was like, I'll be gay here, and they'll just wonder why I'm single, I just won't get married, everything's fine, and I'll just be, you know, I don't know. And we're talking, and I'm like, yeah, so that girl you thought I was living with, Sam, Sam's a guy who just was never home when you were around. She goes, oh, I wondered why she had so many tools. <laughs> and Ben goes, Brian, did you just tell Dad? And he goes, you know about this? And Ben goes, Dad, tell Brian you love him right now. And my dad's like, Brian knows I love him. And Ben goes, no, Dad, tell Brian you love him right to his face right now. And my dad just says, I love you very much, Brian. And I said, Okay, <laughs> and then probably three minutes passed of absolute silence before he just goes, uh, so Bri, I said, yeah. He goes, do you think I'm handling this well? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, dad, you're doing okay. <laughs> so I waited till I was 25, bought a house, had the career, moved out, and I couldn't even say I'm gay. It was, mom, dad, it's, uh, I gotta tell you something, my friend, he's more than just a friend. Oh my God, what did we do? You know, we never hit you, we never beat you, you know, uh, don't worry, we'll go get you the best psychiatrist and get you fixed. And it doesn't work that way. I think when it matters is when you come up to your, your mom, <laughs> the most important uh, person in your life. It, it, oh my God, it, it was so hard. Um, it was not like the, the best, but it was definitely when I said it, it was a relief and it was out and open. If I could rewrite the story, I think I would have prayed for more courage. In 2001, I was on a reality television series. It was aired nationally. We started filming the TV show and halfway through it, um, we were doing our one-on-ones that day. We want to talk about you being gay and you're going to talk about it or the rest of your castmates have already had enough to say about it and we'll just air that. And I turned and I started to walk away and I looked back at them and I said, are you really gonna air this? And they said, why does it matter to you? And I looked at them and I said, it's because my family doesn't know. And that's what made the teasers for the show. And at that moment, I just felt like the world was falling down around me. That moment was for someone to decide that they were gonna tell my story for me. And this moment of being able to tell my story is the very first time I get to tell it the way it should be told. And the way it should be told is, I'm me, authentically who I am, unapologetically, and I'm going to love who I love. Then my mom said to me, the best thing I think a mom can say, she looked at me and said, and I love you just the same. And that was like, the weight of the world lifted off of my chest. It felt like an elephant was like crushing me for so long. And when she said that, it was just a moment to breathe. Huge thank you to Daniel, Brian, Mike, Tainomi Banks, and Ryan for sharing their stories with us. I want you to see the full interviews because they are incredible and compelling and they're all at cityline.tv. We tried very hard to have uh, women represented in that tape, just so you know, uh, but schedules wouldn't allow. We do, however, have a fantastic panel with us right now. Now this year, is the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots in New York City, where violent demonstrations broke out after police raided Stonewall Inn, that's a gay bar in Greenwich Village, in 1969. 
We are celebrating 50 years of what should be equality, but what in fact continues to be an ongoing struggle for LGBTQ plus rights. So we have brought together this incredible panel right now to discuss it. We have got Daniel Pillay, you just heard his story. He's a media personality. We have here the auctioneer, Lane, the auctionista. Hello, Lane. And our very own money expert, Bruce Celery. You know that guy. We heard about Daniel's story uh, coming out, and I'm going to get into it a little bit more in a second. But first, I'd like to hear from you, Lane, mm -hmm. when you came out and what the experience was like. What happened? How'd you do it? Well, I was 41 years old. Mm -hmm. And it was on the day that my mother died. Mm. And, um, you know, I had uh, kept my, my secret for a very, very long time. And the day that my mom died, my immediate family, we were all together. My dad, my sister, my brother-in-law. And I, I mean, clearly we were all suffering. We were all grieving. And uh, my sister said, you know, your, your friend Sue should be here with you. Mm. And of course... I, I would have I wanted nothing more than that so she disappeared she went and she talked to my dad right in that very moment and uh, she outed me that is a very difficult thing but for me that was probably the best thing because my dad came back into the room and he said Lane we're gonna have a chat in the den. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my, and, and, and my heart sank. I thought, oh my gosh, th this is it. Th this is the culmination. This is going to be the moment where I have to explain, um, you know, what is going on here. And he actually, he sat me down and he said, I'm, I'm very, I'm very disappointed. And he said, I'm so disappointed and I'm so hurt that you didn't come to mommy and I before. We love you. They knew Sue was a friend of mine, and they said, we love her. This changes nothing. Get on the phone right now. Get her here. She needs to be here. She is part of our family, and that is not going to change. That, that was how it happened for me. That's beautiful. That is how it happened. It was. It oh was very gosh. overwhelming. It was very overwhelming, but it completely, in that moment, it freed me. Yes. And it actually, Tracy, allowed me to grieve authentically yes. with my significant, my spouse, my life partner with me. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, Bruce, um, when did it happen? <coughs> How did it happen? Well, tonally, I will yeah. say my story is going to be a little bit different. Okay. Not, not to say that it wasn't visceral and moving and emotional. It's yeah. just, it was 25 years ago. Yes. And what I remember most is all the magic and love and serendipity and music and playfulness. So what I will say is the lead up to coming out was deeply traumatic and horrible and awful and I had suicidal thoughts and it was all that you hear that is the worst. Yeah. But what I'd encourage young people to think about is what's their way? Because my way, the Bruce way, is a plan. Mm -hmm. I had a plan. So mm -hmm. I had a therapist and I showed up and he said, okay, we're going to talk about your family. The next week I showed up with a grid. And mm -hmm. on the grid was every family member, every issue, every pro, every con. I had an order, I had a whatever. Yeah. Part of the plan was to go to this personal growth workshop. So I go to this personal growth workshop and there's this moment in the course and it's your time to stand up and say something. And I stand up and I say, I'm gay to like 200 people. And I think this is the biggest thing anyone has ever heard. Yeah. The world is gonna stop turning in this moment. And the facilitator looks at me, he's like, anything else? <laughs> no, that's it, 24 years. Anybody care? Anybody got anything? <laughs> no. And everybody's like, no, we're good. And in that moment, I realized all the drama was over here. All yeah. the drama's over here. People couldn't care less. Right. And so for what I loved about you inviting me here is I don't think of myself 
as a gay man, first and foremost. I mean, I am, clearly. But, <laughs> but I think of myself as a husband and a father and a personal finance guy and a runner and a, you know, like all that stuff. And I think that's a mark of our progress, that it's not even in the top three. So mm -hmm. I executed my plan. I had a whole script for how I was going to talk about it based on my sales experience. And my, the most beautiful <laughs> moment, as one does, as one does, <laughs> but the most beautiful moment for me was after I had told my mom a couple weeks later she sat me down in the in the den and she put on this song the 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 chorus was how could anyone ever uh, tell you you were anything less than beautiful Aww. so she plays that song she lights a candle mm -hmm. and she brings out a toolbox full of art supplies Aww. because her hypothesis was that some element of my creativity <laughs> had been like mushed <laughs> and that now's the time he's gonna paint <laughs> he's gonna paint now because he's out of the Mom's women's group rocked her to Aww. comfort the, you know, the it was just so just beautiful. Just beautiful. I so it can be that. To, uh, I want to go back to Daniel for a moment because what I hear from a lot of people of color who have come out to their family is that you have a great open relationship with your mom, but your father and you, you don't discuss it. No. And I have a lot of friends who just don't discuss it. Yeah. They've come out, they know, but sexual orientation just isn't a thing that comes up. How difficult is it for you to have that not acknowledged with your dad? I just had to get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, I, I kind of knew that I had to become comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. And so when it's not a topic of conversation, you really don't have any fears to address or any discomfort. But I have a very open relationship with him about everything other than my sexuality, and that's okay. I mean, you know, we've got different political issues, and whenever I have a chance, I'm like, you know, I'm gay, right? <laughs> and I, I kind of throw it out there, and he just looks down, and he doesn't really say anything, and then we just continue, so it's right. okay. It's okay. So much has changed, uh, like Bruce has said, but there's, there's so much more to do, and so I want to know from you guys what you feel needs to be worked on right now when it comes to LGBTQ plus 